everyone, welcome to the channel. This is Perpetuality. I don't own a bronze dive watch, but I've been curious and interested in experiencing them for myself. The bronze black bay that you see in my wrist has been loaned in by a friend, but outside of that, I don't own a bronze watch. Now Baltic have sent me the bronze aquascaf, and with that, the 24 month warranty card that you see when you open up the box. Very nice. And then you also will get the measurements for the watch. The watch features a Miyota 9039 movement that beats at 28,800 vibrations per hour, 42 hour power reserve, and its accuracy is about 13 seconds per day as measured here, which is about the average that you expect for this movement. Real world accuracy is always different from measured accuracy. And with that being said, I've averaged about 13 seconds per day. An instruction booklet is kindly provided, including the minutia of details pertaining to your watch, from its features and its elements that you interface with, along with the how to and care instructions. Opening up the hard shelled box for the first time, you reveal a very interesting scent. It's vanilla. And that comes from the tropic rubber strap supplied with the Aquascaf bronze. It's infused with vanilla. Now, suffice to say, first impressions are good so far. The hard shelled box is kept quite minimal. I appreciate that. Thank you, Baltic. But the watch itself is the party piece. And check out that gradient fume brown dial. It's a good marriage to the warmth of the bronze case, if you will. And this is a completely bronze case. What sets apart this watch from its competitors is the usage of copper aluminum. And that is the type of bronze alloy that's employed. Now, when you think about having aluminum and, and copper together, the more aluminum you have, the more stable the alloy is and the slower and more uniform the patina in general. Most bronze watches out in the market are typically made of copper and tin of an 88% to 12% mixture, which is why they patinate so quickly. There are some obvious advantages to using a type of bronze alloy mixture. One may provide more corrosion resistance, and in the case of having aluminum and copper together, it provides one of the highest, most durable cases to be used for diving. A healthy dosage of vintage sizing is what you get with this watch. At around 39 millimeters wide and 47 millimeter lug to lug length, it sits compactly on my six and a half inch wrist. Now, of course, you can wear this watch if you've got a smaller wrist at around 6.2, 6.3. It's totally manageable because of the uh, relative thinness of the watch at 12 millimeters. Not just that, the compactness of the lugs in regards to the way that they just slightly anchor down to the wrist provides that moderate degree of comfort one would come to expect from Baltic. Do you like the appearance of gold but can't really live with paying that large obscene sum of money for it? Then you might be a happy camper with bronze. It's particularly in this case the bronze aluminum that will patinate slower. I'm excited to see how this watch develops over the coming months. I'm even more delighted at the dual personality of the dial. In brighter lighting environments, the dial takes on a earthy tone. It appears to be lighter from the center and darker to the edges. It's a very striking combination. A dive watch just is not complete without good loom. And here we have Super Luminova C1 that's been applied to the bezel, the dial, and the hands. All adequately loomed up. Within 10 seconds of the UV light, this is the appearance that you will get. It is bright enough, but note that the hands and the second hands are brighter than the rest of the dial or the bezel insert. I suspect that's because the hands are larger and have more loom application. I have to praise Baltic for taking the chance on using bronze aluminum for their bronze dive watch here. And the reason being is that the cost prohibitive nature of doing such an alloy is exactly why companies like Tudor would release the Black Bay 58 bronze aluminum in low quantities as a boutique edition. Now this watch retails for about 900 Canadian dollars or around 625 euro, and the quality you get is outstanding. The finish work is exceptional for the money. And though cliche, you have to take a look at how most of the surfaces are treated with fine brushwork. There is not a single polished element outside of the shiny, glossy sapphire bezel on this watch. And that's something that resonates with me. As watches will pick up some wear and tear, fine brushed surfaces tend to hide those scratches better. And then combined with the fact that this watch is bronze, which will patinate over time, hiding those blemishes and making for a uniform look, I'm very excited to see where this watch will develop over time. 
Design aesthetics aside, the usability of the bezel cannot be ignored. 120 clicks, each click is quite solid and noticeable. With minimal back play, there is a semblance of quality here that I appreciate from the bezel. Upon closer inspection and having handled this watch for a week, I've noticed that the edges of the lugs have taken on a bit of patina, and it makes sense as I'm handling the watch, the oils on my skin are interfacing with the bronze alloy. That's just something to expect when you own a bronze watch. The parts where I interface with the watch the most, such as the crown, have been a delight to operate. I find it to be fairly sized, in keeping with the 40mm wide case. The minimal crown guards that barely protrude to protect the crown is a very nice design addition that doesn't take away from the vintage aesthetic. I like the buckle being also made out of bronze alloy, uh, that is aluminum as well. And with that being said, the cohesiveness of this watch cannot be ignored. There are so many boxes that this checks off for me, starting off with the dial for example. Upon closer observance, you'll note that the printing has been executed to an extreme attention to detail, no flaws I can note, every corner of the numerals to be sharp, the indices are perfectly round, and there's a fine graining to the dial that I come to appreciate that makes up that visual fume effect from a distance. The hands themselves have no burrs or rough edges around them. The second's hand painted in white reflects the light beautifully and is a high contrast white for legibility. The sapphire bezel has beautiful reflections and it is resembling an acrylic bezel, a harken back to the vintage way of doing dive watches in the past. If there is a minor nitpicking that I have, it is how the watch sits on my wrist on the Tropic rubber strap. Now, it's not about how big the watch wears, it isn't about the comfort or material of the silicon or tropic strap, it's the buckle. The buckle digs into my skin and I have to wear the watch quite loose to prevent this from happening, which really goes against how I wear all of my watches. If you're an individual that likes to wear their watches just tight enough to the wrist where you're not losing blood circulation, you're going to feel the sharp edges and corner of that buckle digging into your skin. And guess what? That buckle being bronze will also age quicker than the rest of the watch as the backside of it is touching your skin. But altogether, the strap is of an exceptional quality, one of the softest tropic rubber straps that I've handled. I love tropic straps in the way that they vent up the wrist. They have small little holes that are in a diamond-like pattern all around the length of the strap, if you will, to help you air out your wrist during summertime. Quite valuable uh, if you think about on the wrist comfort. The buckle itself is nicely signed with the Baltic logo, and the way that it makes this watch really look period correct is a selling point to me. Another nitpicking point is the movement that's been used in this watch, which is the Miyota 9039. At 42 hour power reserve, it definitely is on the scale of lower than needs to be. I understand some of you have multiple watches and power reserve is not an issue, but really longer power reserve is always beneficial. Why not if you can have it, in my opinion. Now if you like today's video, please like the video and consider subscribing. It helps out the channel and I will definitely catch you in the next one.